So what is the best primer to use for the mural that you're about to start on a wall or the pavement or asphalt, you know, anything like that? What is the best primer to use or what type of primer do you even need or do you need a primer at all? So we're going to talk about that today. So before we do, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I do videos like this. Now let's get started. So when we talk about primer, especially in our case, in terms of murals and street art, we're thinking of basically adding a layer to whatever surface you want to that will sort of prepare that layer to sort of adhere to paint or to have paint just last on that layer and to cover up some of the stuff on that actual surface that you're painting on. So maybe something underneath, like they have a dark color or they have another painting. It's a brick and it's sort of different colors. You want to make sure that you have sort of like a liquid canvas layer so that you're able to have sort of that entire wall or pavement, whatever you're painting on to feel like a canvas, feel like it's a blank layer that, that you can add paint on and it's going to stick. So that's basically what a primer sort of does or is for our purposes and when we're sort of thinking about different surfaces not all surfaces need a primer when I'm thinking about sort of new construction drywall or maybe even an office space that's already white I usually don't buy primer to sort of paint on those surfaces because they're already prepared for paint I just got to sort of wipe it down make sure I sort of cleared of all the oils and grease stuff like that and then basically just paint but when we're talking something like stucco or masonry brick concrete the pavement on the ground or asphalt on like a basketball court or anything like that then you really have to think about using a primer so a primer in those cases will basically sort of seal some of those pores because a lot of these old surfaces will be porous without primer if you were to paint on those surfaces you'll see that it becomes really chalky and you, it requires a lot of paint because the brick or that sort of concrete, the porous areas will suck in that paint. We call a surface like that thirsty. Adding a primer to those different areas will allow for, you know, there to be sort of like a blank canvas on top so that you're able to add paint to like the brick or concrete or masonry areas and not have the brick sort of drink it. I've done a ton of corrugated metal, uh, but I don't really use a lot of primer on those sort of surfaces, mainly because the metal that I painted on was sort of like a really light color and it's not sort of a porous surface or surface area. So I didn't really need to have a primer be the first coat. I could just basically paint right on top of. So now that we talked a little bit about why we use primers, especially, you know, in our context, street art and murals, let's actually go to the store and I will show you some of the primers that I have used in the past to do some of my mural work and show you some of the tools that I've used to actually apply that primer to that surface. So the primers that I'm going to show you, you can find at many of the hardware stores or paint stores, usually like Ace Hardware or Lowe's or Home Depot, things like that. But the Kills 2 primer is the one that I go to all the time. And it's sort of like the all purpose one. It's the interior, exterior, the Kills 2. I think there's like a Kills 3, but this is the all purpose one. So you can kind of see, you know, wood, drywall, plaster, brick, masonry, galvanized metals or, you know, painted metal everything like that it's able to stick to and not only that it's like an hour drying time so it's really really uh, fast when it comes to uh, applying it and putting on a top coat so this is something that I go to all the time uh, mainly because it's just readily available a lot of people use it and they have it in sort of different quantities as well. Another one is the Bullseye One Two Three All Surface Primer. It's basically almost the same. I really haven't sort of used this in a while because I can't find it in the five gallon buckets all the time. Usually it's this the Kills Primer I can find in five gallon buckets. But you can kind of see from the pictures of the hand in there, like you can use it on a ton of different things just like the Kills Primer. I'm really thinking that, you know, a lot of these different sort of primers are basically the same thing. But, you know, this one has like the option of the gray, as you can see, and they also have like the spray as well. So a lot of these formulas uh, may be the same, but just different names um, in terms of just like the brand. 
And the one I used recently for a mural on the street is the Prime Coat 2 Primer and Sealer. And it's made by the same parent company as the, the Bullseye. And I did it because they had the sort of image of the hand sort of sealing up concrete because it says seals concrete. So this one I thought would be, you know, really good for just you know, painting on the road, on, on the ground in this no parking space. And I used about 20 gallons of it. So I had about four buckets of this right here. And it turned out really great. It sort of really made this sort of uh, surface to where I was able to put on some of these bright yellows and oranges and everything sort of just popped and it sort of covered up you know anything that was underneath that i sort of painted on top of so this one i i would say this is one of my favorite ones right here even though i will still use the kills 2 primer this one was really really great but i'm definitely going to say that they are all pretty much interchangeable there is one difference between some of the different primers and that is some are water-based all i use are water-based but some are oil-based too so this one right here is an oil-based primer that you can use i really never use oil uh, sort of base sort of products mainly because it's just messy because the cleanup and everything with the regular primers all you need uh, to clean up is just water and it goes through a sprayer really fast we'll get to that in a second but you know a lot of these sort of primers are really great i never tried this gripper one the gripper is one that i started to see just a little bit ago and never got to try it so i may try that one out soon as you can see the difference in price from 20 to 26 from the prime coat to the left of it and the gripper to the right you can kind of see it's about you know six dollars more so i don't know if you know there's a quality difference i may try it and just see but most of these primers i would say would work with any um project that you have uh going on and they also have like the like i said the spray um sort of primers so they have a different application but any of these primers would work out really well to apply any of these primers to a wall or surface you know all you need to do is just roll it that's the most simple way and any of these rollers will do but they are for different surfaces so like this one right here is the foam one for really smooth surfaces not a lot of paint load so i don't really use those too too much other than like drywall stuff so i usually go to the fuzzy ones and you can kind of see some of the different sort of qualities so like the nap that 3 8 right there is basically just saying that the nap on the roller is 3 8 inches long the longer the sort of uh, nap the more paint you can have on it so like this 3 4 one will have more load or paint load uh, when you sort of put it in the bucket um, and the quality of the rollers sometimes differ i haven't really found too big of a quality difference but i don't use a ton of variations of paint i usually stick to water-based uh, acrylic latex house paint that is like flat and exterior but you know some of these rollers are made i guess better for oils or you know eggshell or glossy but i haven't really found too big of a quality difference for me they're all sort of interchangeable i just get the ones with the longer nap for you know surfaces that are really really rough so like a brick one you know this three-fourths will do uh, or anything like an inch will do so like this uh, one-fourth or a quarter inch or a half inch one you know those are for for me like smoother surfaces or semi-smooth surfaces so the best way to you know apply primer really fast is just to roll it and like i said i do this all the time and the only other sort of item you really kind of need is just a handle i would say the shorter ones are really uh more durable but some you can get one that's a little bit longer but they fit on all of the different rollers that i kind of showed you and if the space is really large that you have to prime i would say just use the nine inch rollers they require a bigger handle uh, for you to sort of put the rollers on but you know they sort of have like a huge paint load that you can sort of put on each of the rollers especially for like this sort of 
one and one fourth inch one you know you can put a lot of paint in there but those rollers are you know for larger spaces so i have a ton of these in my studio and for other supplies that i use i have like all these plastic sort of um, trays basically i use a ton of colors so i just need a ton of trays and these plastic ones that come in, in like a tin pack are ones that are really easy to sort of you know just use and change up when you're sort of changing up colors you know they have the heavy duty ones as well but you know the plastic ones that are really you know light they are flimsy but if you take care of them you know i've used you know one over and over and over or you can just get fancy and get the hard plastic one or the hard metal one and a secret weapon that I use all the time is the extension pole. You can get them in different sizes from like two to four feet or like, you know, you got an eight feet one. But these really help out because when you're rolling, you're using more of your shoulders and your back to sort of roll rather than your wrist. Because if you're rolling too much with your wrist, it is going to sort of wear out and sort of ache over time. So the extension pole is really great. And if you have a really large project, like an entire building, you just don't want to roll, you know, the sprayers are a great option. I did an entire building with a handheld one, um, but, you know, I've gotten used to sort of these larger industrial sprayers. So sprayers really help out and they are capable of using any of the primers that I listed. So hopefully you get informed on the primers that I've used in my practice and how I use it and when to use primer, when not to use primer, some of the tools that I use as well, you know, the rollers. So basically, I just like I said, wanted to share some of the behind the scenes of, you know, how primer is used in sort of murals. So hopefully you like the video, uh, like, subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I do videos like this. Definitely check out some of the other videos so that you can see me applying some of the actual primer that I sort of showed in this video and some of these other ones and I will see you next time. Peace.